uh, this was put in Brother Fred's spirit, and we've been praying, and we've been listening to the Holy Spirit, and so I'm going to turn it over to him, and uh, we can get started tonight. So the title of the message tonight is Praying in Tandem with God. It's a type of partnership, praying in partnership with God, and that's what I've had in my spirit for several days about praying in partnership, but then as I was uh, walking in the woods and praying and, and seeking the Lord, uh, he said praying in tandem, and so I want to uh, develop that concept tonight, praying in tandem with God, because you see there's a lot of power released when you pray in tandem with God, and I want to start by saying that God gave believers great authority uh, on the earth, and it's important for us to walk in that authority, mm -hmm. realize that we have it, and just like uh, any a good manager, once God allocates some authority, uh, delegates authority to someone, then he doesn't go in and run roughshod over them and, and uh, uh, forget about the authority he delegated. And it's the same with God. God delegates authority to us, of course, through uh, Jesus Christ, who said he has all authority in heaven and earth but then he delegates authority to us. And so God wants to do things on the earth and he wants to partner with you and with me uh, because you are the person that he has given authority here. So he's not just going to ignore the fact that he has delegated authority to you, but he wants you to partner with him to bring forth his purposes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way that I, I visualize this, it's, uh, it's like a tandem bike. And a tandem bike is uh, two people, uh, one behind the other. And they're both pedaling and putting their full effort into a particular uh, trip on the, on the bicycle, but only one is guiding. And uh, what we're talking about today is that it's God, uh, through his Holy Spirit, is guiding where we're going and where our, what our prayers are going to be focused on. And he wants us to pray in tandem with him at times. Now, there's a lot of different ways to pray. And so uh, I'm not saying this is the only way uh, to pray, but this is an important way to pray. And the reason I say it, this is an important way to pray is that this is the way Jesus always That's prayed. Right. Amen. Jesus always prayed this way, uh, tandem pr prayers with God. And that's uh, going along with what he wants, what he wants on the earth. And I want to start with a couple of examples, just practical examples from uh, Sherry's life and my life. Uh, Sherry prayed for nine years uh, for uh, Africa, for pastors in Africa and believers in Africa uh, without any real avenue to go to Africa herself. Okay, so she was partnering with God for the people in Africa. And then after nine years, there was a time that uh, the telephone rang and she did have an opportunity to mm -hmm. go to Africa and she went. But she prayed for nine years or well, regardless of whether she was going. And, and that's important because that was God's will. And I also want to give you this example, which I have used before. And, and one night in July of 1993, uh, just to when I got in, uh, to bed, I laid my head on my uh, pillow, and uh, I heard the Lord tell me to get up and go pray, and so it was a time that I wanted to sleep. I, I'd been out of the country for a week, and, and I was tired, and I was ready to go to sleep, but he asked me to pray, and, and so I got up, and I went to pray, and I prayed uh, until he released me, and basically, I knew who I was praying for. It was not a close acquaintance. It was a person who I knew as a minister in the area, a woman. And uh, this, the story is what actually happened. Uh, she was in uh, 800 miles away from here and not even near her home, 800 miles. And she was uh, in, in the uh, hospital and the devil killed her. Uh, so the devil killed her, but it was not her, uh, her course wasn't finished on the earth. And God needed somebody to give him the, the uh, authority to, to operate in her life. And so he asked me to pray for her. So it wasn't my will 
I, I didn't even know where the woman was. I didn't know what the situation was. But see, she was dead, so her family wasn't praying for her. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I prayed, and, and uh, while I was praying, this is what happened to her. She died, and she was going down a tunnel of light. And before she got to the end of the tunnel, the Lord said to her, Lady, it's not your time. You go back and you preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. And again, it wasn't my will. It was his will. But he wanted a partner on the earth to pray for her. And her family had stopped praying because she was dead. Uh, so I prayed and he raised her up Amen. and brought her back and she, and she lived. And she continued uh, with her ministry. Uh, so it was a, a perfect example of it wasn't my will because I had no clue where she was or what was going on with her. But the Lord, but I knew I was praying for her because God told me to, to pray for her. Now, I want to go back. Uh, when I uh, looked at the disciples in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I very much related to them when when Jesus said, can you pray with me an hour? And they couldn't. And I always thought, well, the flesh is weak and I, I couldn't pray either. And I understand that. But when I was filled with the Holy Spirit and, and I was uh, walking across my living room late one night, uh, maybe I was going to go get a snack or get some water or something. And, and Jesus asked me, uh, can you pray with me one hour? And when he said that, I fell on my face and I began to pray for an hour and more than that. And uh, as a result of that, I knew I could pray. Mm -hmm. and, and so no longer did I relate myself to the disciples in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, but I related myself to the disciples in the book of Acts. Acts. Hallelujah. Glory to Hallelujah. God. Because I tell you, when, the whole, when you feel with the Holy Spirit, you can pray. Amen. You can pray in the middle of the night. You can, you can arise and and join with the Lord in, in prayer. So I, I'm talking about tandem prayer where you're on the back part of a bicycle, a tandem bicycle, and you're, you're pedaling it for as hard as you can pedal, but you're not guiding. You're not the one choosing what to pray for. It's God uh, Ooh, that is yeah. choosing what yeah. you're going to pray for. Now, there's a yeah. lot of different ways uh, to partner with God in prayer. And I don't want you to think this is the only way. This is just the way that Jesus always prayed. So it's pretty important. <clears throat> but there are other ways. There are other ways that you can visualize it. I want to uh, talk about how we might partner with God uh, so that you can visualize it. Well, let's say rather than us being in tandem, let's say that we're side by side uh, in prayer with God, praying, uh, praying with him in agreement and we're in unity with him and and we have the same desires and the same interests okay and so that's a, a prayer partnership and that's the kind of prayer partnership i've always thought about mm -hmm. and it's an important one and we have the same goals the same desires and we pray in partnership that way that's a side by side but there's a that was the first example i wanted to give but the second example then that i want to give you thank you the second example I want to give is uh, maybe you can take the initiative and you get out ahead of God, but you ask God to come along with you and support you. And this is like John 15, 7. It's a way to partner with him. It's to get out ahead of him and bring him along with you. And so in John 15, 7, uh, Jesus said, uh, if you abide in me, so there's some conditions for this kind of partnership. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done for you. And so we can have different kinds of partnership where we're side by side with him, where we're out ahead of him, or in this case that I'm looking at now is the third example, and that is in tandem with him, and we're praying to bring forth God's will. It's not, we're not praying to bring forth our will. It's praying to bring forth his will. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly the way Jesus prayed. This is the ultimate um, tandem prayer was his prayer. And we pick it up in Matthew 26, 39. And he said, uh, if it's possible. So he's praying to the father. He's out in the garden of Gethsemane. And he said, Jesus said, 
If it's possible, uh, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a tandem prayer is not your will, but it's God's will. You're, you're in tandem with him. You're, you're pedaling on that bicycle. You're praying with all your, all your strength, a fervent prayer with all your passion. Uh, but it, you didn't identify what it was you're praying for. You're, you're praying into God's purpose. And then he said uh, in Luke uh, um, 22, 42, he said, if, it, uh, if you're willing, let this cup be removed from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will. So here's a little different prayer. It was, if it's possible, let the cup go. The other one was, if you're willing, let the cup go, let it pass from me. But he got down to the bottom line. This is Jesus's bottom line. And he said, not my will, but your will. Let your will be done. And, and so he prayed into God's will. Now, just to know about mm -hmm. Jesus, there are three verses, which I don't want Cherry to read. These are from John to show you that he came to the earth to do God's will. He didn't come to do his own will. So this is the way he always prayed. So I'm going to ask her to pray, to read these three verses in John 3 and 5 and 6. Uh, oh, and I'm sorry, four, John 4, four, 4. John 4, 34. This is the New American Standard. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Okay, so he's saying my substance and my nourishment, I get that from doing the Father's will, not doing his own will. Okay. Next one. John 5, 30. I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Now, that's very important. He's not seeking his own will. He's seeking the will of him that sent him. And that really caused me to think about 1 John 13, when it gives really what I call the definition of love. Love seeks not its own. So if you're seeking your own, if you're seeking your own, you're, that's not love. It's just non-love. And you can certainly seek uh, your own at times, but it's just not love. Because love does not seek its own. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying here, read this verse again, Terry. I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So he's always work, walking in love. Mm -hmm. Jesus is always mm -hmm. walking in love. We see him throughout the Gospels. He's walking in love. And he's seeking the will of the Father. Oh, now, hallelujah. have one more hallelujah. here. They all look, they're all related. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a depth to all three of these. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 38. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Okay. So what we see here in all of this, it's about Jesus came to do the will of the Father. So he's always praying to the father uh, and he's always it, it's like he's operating on this tandem bike mm -hmm. where the father mm -hmm. is determining <laughs> and guiding where he's going what he's praying for but he's mm -hmm. putting his full effort, effort. into the prayers and ta and these prayers in tandem with god now i do not want you to think this is the only way to pray no not at all you can certainly pray for yourself uh, and I encourage you to pray for yourself. And if I pray for Sherry, I, and I can, and I pray a lot for Sherry, and I pray. I need it. And, and so we pray for each other. <laughs> and, 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 and But that's just not this doing God's will. This is me praying for my needs or praying for my desires. Uh, this is me praying for her, but she and I are one. So if I pray for her, I'm really mm -hmm. still praying pray for, for, for my <laughs> desires and, and myself. But a tandem mm -hmm. prayer, praying in tandem with God is not about your desires. It's not about what you want. It's not about your customs. It's not about your traditions. Or your culture. Or it's not about your religious uh, doctrine. It's praying what you hear from God by his spirit and tandem prayers. Now, if this is the kind of prayer that Jesus always prayed and he doesn't change, 
He, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what he did when he said, not my will, but your will, this is the pattern for all of his prayers. It wasn't his will, but it was the will of the Father in all cases. And I'm not saying this is the only way to pray, but I'm saying this is the way Jesus prayed. And as a result of the way he prayed, mm -hmm. there were many signs and, and wonders. wonders. Thank so you. the series that we're talking about are signs and wonders uh, that leaders do signs and, and wonders. wonders. And so uh, you can't pray selfish prayers and expect a bunch of signs, signs and, and wonders. wonders. Amen. You've got to get in tune and in, in tandem. tandem with God, and then you will see the signs and wonders. So that's the point of this message. Well, we've got to pray differently if we want to see signs and wonders. Now, I want you... Well, can I give one example here? Okay. It's uh, uh, Sister Rebecca and I, Sister Becky, uh, we... Um, there was a time when, when we, when our children were small and we would take them to mother's morning out and then we would either go to her house or my house and we would just, we would just intercede. We would just pray. Mm -hmm. And we would uh, pray in, uh, as intercessors, as prophetic intercessors, but also we would uh, go into travail. And one, one morning, and, I, and I'm sure she remembers this, we ended up both, uh, face down on the floor, uh, praying in the spirit. And we heard the Holy Spirit say, ask what you will, and it, and I will do it. Ask what you will, and I will do it. And at that time, we were praying for uh, Sister Mildred uh, Stuttered, who was going through a serious situation in her body. And that was one of the ones that we were praying about uh, for healing uh, for her body, and and that's exactly what we asked for. And the Lord raised her up, and and healed her, made her whole. And so this was, I believe, we were praying in tandem uh, with the Lord uh, during that that session that day. And it was it was wonderful. It was a wonderful experience to know that we were praying uh, with Him. So it's one thing, we can pray for what we desire, we can pray for what other people desire, but God has given us authority and he wants to partner with us. And Sherry and I have known this for years and years, we, we are God's intercessors. And so we intercede a lot of times for what he wants. And this has been our situation and the way we've operated uh, for 40 years. We, we go to cities uh, mm -hmm. all over this state and the states that surround here and other and cities, the world. but we've also gone through capital cities around the world. Uh, I've prayed for in Tokyo and, uh, China, uh, and Beijing, China, and London, England, and Madrid, Madrid, Madrid Spain, Spain, and uh, Oh. Columbia, South America. Yeah, uh, Bogota, Colombia, Havana, Cuba, and uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, capital cities in Washington, D.C., of course. A and we're praying for all of those nations. Now, that wasn't my will because, see, it's not about just me praying for my desires. And, you know, there's this phrase, me, uh, I'm praying for me and... Uh, my four no more. Well, that's not what a, a tandem prayer is. It's about praying for God's desires, God's purposes, to bring forth his purpose on the earth. And so when, when we've gone to all of these different nations around the world, and we've prayed for those nations, and, and some of the nations are up uh, right now in real turmoil, mm -hmm. and we're continuing to pray for the uh, nations uh, been there's been a real a change in the government in Honduras. There's yes, been a change yes. in Mexico. Uh, there's been all kinds of changes, uh, and, and we're continuing to pray. But but see, we're not just focused. I'm talking about Sherry now. We're not just focused on our problems. We've got a bigger agenda mm -hmm. and a bigger vision, uh, and 
That's the reason for this message tonight is that I want to broaden and enlarge your vision. I want you to think in, in broader terms uh, than, than just the, the local uh, community or the local congregation or, or your family or your uh, family situation. It'll be bigger. Uh, have a mindset that's like God. Uh, we're to imitate him. Have the mind mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, <laughs> see, in Romans 8, 34 and uh, Hebrews 7, 25, he's ever interceding. He's ever praying for. Well, what is Jesus praying for? He's praying for his people to rise up Amen. and to fulfill their purpose. Amen. And, and he needs you uh, to partner with him uh, for people to rise up and to fulfill their purpose. And, and when we're seeing that happen, uh, there's going to be changes and the kingdom, see, is within you, but we need to release the kingdom from you to let it go into the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. So about let the kingdom come. Let heaven come on earth. Uh, uh, let, let it come on earth. Let it be here. What we see in heaven let it let it invade uh earth let it invade mm. earth and god needs partners to bring heaven to earth and, and there's different ways that you can do it you can just uh pray uh in, in a very specific way for your community or your congregation or your friends but but god wants people with a broad vision mm. that, that see the kingdom and like I said, Sherry and I are God's intercessors. We don't, we just don't pray for anything. Uh, a lot of time, uh, people try to get us involved in uh, prayer chains, and, and we don't get, we don't get involved in prayer chains because uh, we're not led by man, and we're we don't pray according to what what man wants us to pray. We have to pray. We've got a higher calling. We have to pray what God wants us to pray. Now, that doesn't mean we don't pray for each other and we don't pray for ourselves. There are times we do that. But we have spent a lifetime of praying for the kingdom, to advance the kingdom, Hallelujah. to bring heaven on earth. And there's lots of different ways that you can partner. And I'm not saying this is the only way. I want you to know there are a lot of different ways that you can partner with God, but this is a way. This is the way that Jesus prayed. He said, not my will, will but, but your will, will be, be done. done. Amen. And so he put all of his time and energy and effort into that bicycle, in that tandem bike in prayer. He was partnering with God, bringing forth God's purposes. Sure, he had his he had his uh, uh, things that he would like to do. He had his desires, but he laid them down. Are you willing? to lay down your agenda, to bring forth God's that's agenda, agenda on the earth. Amen. There's not enough people now. And that's the reason we need to be praying for the kingdom to come. We need more people to yield to God's will. And so if we're going to follow Jesus, we have to put some of our things and some of our desires and some of our plans and agendas, we have to yield to him and lay those things down. That's what somebody on a bicycle and, and you're not guiding the bicycle, but you're putting all your effort into pedaling the bicycle and letting somebody else uh, lead you and guide you. You know, that's what they said about Peter. That's what Jesus said about Peter. He said, you know, you've been in pretty much in control, but it's going to come a time and somebody else is going to take you places you don't want to go. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to hallelujah. God. Well, that's the time we're in. That's the yeah. time we're in. That somebody else is going to lead us. Woo, you know, glory. Psalm 143.10 says, teach me to do your, your will, will, Father. Teach me to do your will and let your spirit, your good spirit, guide me. So where's the guidance coming from on that tandem bicycle? And you're sitting in the second seat. It's coming through the Holy Spirit. And you've got to pedal with all your might uh, to bring forth the will of God and Amen. bring forth the kingdom and bring forth heaven. Let heaven Hallelujah. invade the Hallelujah. earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for <laughs> being here tonight. Praise the 